Hello, welcome back to Inspired America. Hey, check it out. I got a new t-shirt. These just came in. It's already wrinkled. I love this thing. I sleep in it. Uh, but okay, uh, enough of that. Today's uh, Today, we're talking about the Electoral College. Everyone loves this one, so uh, this, this, this should be good. We've got Professor Stevens on the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to hear from him. We're going to get his insight on things. So uh, let's get into the article. Distrust of direct democracy. Many of the founders were wary of direct democracy. They were concerned that voters, spread across a vast and largely rural nation, might not have enough information to make an informed choice for president. The Electoral College was seen as a buffer that would allow a group of informed electors to make the final decision, acting as a safeguard against potential mob rule or the election of demagogues. After the treatment that the colonists received from King George III, they did everything in their power to prevent a monarchical rule to ever happen again. The Founding Fathers, they were sharp. They, they thought about this way ahead of time. And so therefore we have things included in the Constitution like the Electoral College to help put a stop to this. The Electoral College stands as a distinctive and pivotal institution in the American electoral process. Since its inception, it has influenced presidential elections in profound ways. This comprehensive article digs into the origins, significance, and modern-day impact of the Electoral College, exploring its complex role in shaping the nation's political landscape. The Constitutional Foundation, the framers of the U.S. Constitution, during the Constitutional Convention of 1787, grappled with the issue of how to elect the president. They sought a balance between the popular vote and the interests of smaller states. The result was the creation of the Electoral College, enshrined in Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution. How does the Electoral College work? The Electoral College consists of 538 electors and, to win the presidency, a candidate needs at least 270 electoral votes. Each state is assigned a set number of electors equal to its representation in Congress, with 435 from the House of Representatives and 100 from the Senate. Additionally, the District of Columbia has three electors. On Election Day, Americans vote for their preferred presidential candidate, but they are technically voting for a slate of electors chosen by the political parties in each state. These electors, representing their state, then cast their votes for president in the Electoral College. The winner-takes-all system, the Electoral College, operates on a winner-takes-all basis in most states. This means that the candidate who wins the popular vote in a state usually receives all of its electoral votes. However, Maine and Nebraska use a proportional system where the winner of the popular vote in each congressional district gets one electoral vote, and the statewide winner receives two additional votes. Origins and Rationale The framers of the Constitution established the Electoral College for several reasons. One was a concern about the practicality of a direct popular vote in the 18th century, given the vastness of the country and the limitations of communication and transportation. Another crucial factor was a desire to preserve the influence of smaller states. The Electoral College gives every state, regardless of size, a minimum of three electoral votes, representing their senators and at least one House member. This allocation ensures that less populous states have a more significant role in the presidential election process. Challenges and criticisms over the years the Electoral College has faced criticism and calls for reform. One key concern is that it can lead to situations where a candidate who loses the popular vote still wins the presidency, as seen in elections like 2000 and 2016. Critics argue that this undermines the principle of one person, one vote. 
amending or abolishing the Electoral College, changing or eliminating the Electoral College would require a constitutional amendment, a challenging process that involves a two-thirds majority in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, or a convention called by two-thirds of the state legislature's proposal by a two-thirds majority in both the House of Representatives and the Senate or through a constitutional convention called for by two-thirds of state legislatures. Any proposed amendment would then need ratification by three-fourths of the states. This difficulty in altering the system highlights the deep-rooted nature of the Electoral College in America, the role of faithless electors, while the Electoral College vote is typically determined by the popular vote within each state, there have been instances of faithless electors. These are electors who do not vote in accordance with the popular vote results in their state, though such occurrences have rarely affected the outcome of an election. Conclusion: The Electoral College remains a subject of debate and discussion, with proponents asserting that it upholds the principles of federalism and ensures that the interests of smaller states are protected. Critics, on the other hand, continue to argue for a more direct popular vote system. As the U.S. continues to evolve, the debate over the Electoral College will likely persist. Understanding its history and function is crucial for engaging in this critical aspect of America Hello everyone, this article provides a concise overview of the Electoral College, effectively summarizing its origins, mechanics, and the ongoing debate surrounding its relevance. The historical context is well captured, particularly the framers' intention to balance popular sovereignty with the interests of smaller states. However, the article could benefit from a deeper exploration of the ideological and philosophical underpinnings of the Electoral College. It might also delve further into the historical debates during the Constitutional Convention that led to this compromise, such as the fears of factionalism and tyranny of the majority. Additionally, while the article touches on modern criticisms, it could expand on the impact of the Electoral College on political campaigns, voter behavior, and the broader democratic process. Overall, the piece serves as a solid introduction but a more nuanced analysis would enrich the reader's understanding of this complex institution. Blackout Coffee. Fresh roasted, old flavors, serving heroes on the front lines. Blackout! Blackout Coffee, baby! Blackout Coffee! Since day one, Blackout Coffee has been built on a strong brand with a passionate fan base. Our growth over the last four years has been a testament to the high standard of our coffee. From the ingredients we use to the values as a company we have, quality is something Blackout Coffee drinkers expect. Blackout Coffee is positioned for continuing. Okay, Professor, I've got some feedback for you. I think it's time to abolish the Electoral College. I think it's old and outdated because nowadays we, we have a press. Back in the day, the whole reason why they put this together is because the people in the colonies, they didn't know who the heck to vote for. There was no press, there's no newspaper. Well, there's a newspaper, but you had to be rich to, only rich people bought the newspaper. But, you know, they didn't have, you know, fake news, Twitter, Truth Social. They had no um, social media whatsoever. So they weren't informed. They couldn't make an informed decision. That's why... The Founding Fathers thought it would be a good idea to have electors help make decisions for us because they were informed. Trust me, they they knew the ins and outs on everybody. So that's, that's why they put the Electoral College in. Again, because the people in the colonies had no idea who these people were on the ticket because, again, there's no press. Okay? So... Electoral College, it's outdated, time to get away with it, or time to go away from it. I think that each state needs to hold a vote, and that state's going to either come to the conclusion that they're Democrat or Republican, and whoever has the most state wins, wins. 
and I know there's 50 states, so there's a possibility of a, of a tie. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, but end of the day, I think that um, we get away from the Electoral College and do something else. And uh, that's all I got for you guys. Thanks again for watching. Go to the website and buy yourself a shirt. You deserve it. And uh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.